Hello, this is Tony Heller from RealClimateScience.com, the climate guy setting the record straight about climate. In this video, I show how corrupted graphs lead to corrupted science. 20 years ago, NOAA's leading Arctic expert, James Overpeck, said that the Arctic had warmed by 1.5 degrees Celsius from 1840 to 1950, and it was largely natural. What we see from 1840 to the 1950s is a rise of about 1.5 degrees Celsius, or 2.7 degrees, Overpeck said. He said much of this can be linked to natural forces, principally changes in solar radiation. But then he went on to say, in recent decades, the continued rise of a fraction of a degree cannot be explained by changes in solar radiation and must be attributed to greenhouse gases causing global warming. Let's analyze Overpeck's claim that greenhouse gases have caused recent warming in the Arctic and see where it came from. Overpeck was probably looking at graphs like this one from NASA. The graph shows temperatures at the capital of Iceland, Reykjavik, and showed warming from 1900 to about 1950, then cooling until the 1980s, and then sharp warming since the 1980s. Overpeck probably looked at this recent warming and said, we don't have any way to explain that. So it must be due to greenhouse gases. But it's not due to greenhouse gases. It's due to data tampering. The yellow line shows actual measured temperatures in Reykjavik, and the black line shows what they report to the public. You can see that they've tremendously cooled the past there. Here's NASA's unadjusted graph for Reykjavik temperatures. You can see that the 1940s were warmer than the present. Had Overpeck been using the unadjusted data, he wouldn't have seen any reason to believe that recent warming was any different than the prior warming. So now let's look at what caused the prior warming. The red line in this graph shows the Atlantic multi-decadal oscillation, and the blue line shows the unadjusted temperatures in Reykjavik. The Atlantic multi-decadal oscillation is an ocean cycle which periodically causes warming and cooling in the North Atlantic. As you can see, there's nearly perfect correlation between the AMO and temperatures at Reykjavik, which are fairly typical for the Eastern Arctic. So there's no reason to blame recent warming in the Arctic on greenhouse gases. It's much better explained by the Atlantic multi-decadal oscillation. The AMO may have peaked about 10 years ago and appears to be now on a downwards trend. If so, we would expect the temperatures at Reykjavik would decline with it. And not surprisingly, the minimum Arctic sea ice extent has also been increasing for the last decade. As the AMO declines, Arctic sea ice extent increases. So let's look now to see if NASA had any justification for erasing the warmth of the 1940s in the Arctic. And the answer is no. If we look at reports from the 1940s and 1950s, we can see that the Arctic was very warm and the ice was melting very rapidly. This article is from February 1954. It said, Pool evidence indicate that the Atlantic Ocean is in the midst of its warmest period since 1600. The scientists said the Arctic ice cap is receding, the thickness of the Arctic ice diminishing. Sixty years ago, scientists understood that Arctic behavior depended on temperatures in the Atlantic Ocean, i.e. the Atlantic multi-decadal oscillation is what we call it now. Had Overpeck been looking at the AMO instead of the wildly corrupted temperature graphs from NASA, he might have come to a different conclusion. He might have realized that what's going on in the Arctic has nothing to do with greenhouse gases and everything to do with ocean circulation. Data tampering by Gavin Schmidt at NASA is catastrophic to climate science. It completely corrupts scientists' thinking about what's going on in the Arctic and the rest of the world. NASA has been massively cooling the past for decades, and they continue to do so. The top line shows the 2001 version of NASA global temperatures, and the bottom line shows their 2015 version. You can see how they continue to cool the past more and more year after year. Sort of data tampering by NASA wrecks science and completely corrupts the thinking of scientists like James Overpeck. Had he been looking at real data, he probably would have come to the correct conclusion that greenhouse gases have little or nothing to do with global temperatures or Arctic temperatures. Global warming is the biggest scam in science history, and Congress needs to cut off funding for it. Visit Toto on the web at realclimatescience.com. He's been pulling back the curtain on junk science for a long time.